Hello and welcome everyone in another episode of Researcher Celebrity. Today we have a global researcher. So today we are fortunate enough to have uh, Dr. Anirban Sanyal. Anirban has done his MSc from University of Aberdeen in UK. Then he moved for his PhD to Freie University in Berlin, following which he moved to International Max Planck Research Institute for Infectious Disease and Immunology in Berlin. And then he joined as a senior medical writer in Sanofi Pasteur. And presently, he is a global medical publication manager at Lyon, France for Sanofi also. Thank you very much, Anirban, for accepting our invitation to share your journey with our research community. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm not sure uh, the term celebrity really suits me or not. I'm still quite uh, at the beginning of my of my career post my education. So, but I'm happy to help uh, everybody who wants to know about my experiences and share share my uh, share of uh, you know experiences in in research field as well. Yeah, that's that's very humble of you and sweet of you, uh, Anirban. So here at uh, Empowering Science Foundation, we believe in breaking the barriers, and that is uh, what the what the web series Researcher Celebrity comes up with the idea to celebrate every single researcher in this uh, world, so that they can understand. And as you said, that you don't think that you are a celebrity, but you are a celebrity for us. Whatever research you are doing, whatever you have done in past, and whatever you will be doing in future, they are specifically contributing to human health or in society in general. And that is the idea for what we will be having this conversation. So to start with the conversation, Anirban, when you decided that you want to be in research? Um, <clears throat> It's an interesting question. Um, my uh, interest in in our research or biological science research, I, I'm not sure if I can pinpoint to a particular time in my life when that kind of got triggered. But uh, the fact that I was always very intrigued by life sciences itself, right from my early days in school, I always took to liking. I, I was a, my, I think biology and chemistry were my most favorite subjects, and uh, I always um, you know put maximum effort in reading those and coming up with as much information as I could in those days. Uh, remember then we still didn't have Google search uh, at that time in India, uh, I mean, uh, as, as far as I recall. So uh, I think the interest was spiked because of what was happening around me. Um, I always got intrigued when uh, when I came to know uh, about the miracles of, of life itself. Um, I was my my mother was very um, uh, very persuasive in me uh, getting all sorts of encyclopedias on life science on every birthday of mine so that kind of uh, you know it vetted my cause as well to to quite a bit but yes I I mean I took to like liking the whole concept of life science itself uh, and later on as and when I progressed in my academia I think the interest got even even more hooked up into infectious diseases. And uh, as and when we speak today, maybe I will be able to unravel as to how it happened. So basically nice. that. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you uh, said about that you always wanted to be, you know, you know, all the encyclopedias gifted to you were the one uh, which uh, played important role. So from your education, when you were in India, and then you chose to go to University of Aberdeen for masters. Was that academic or research oriented? It was more uh, academic um, because at that time, uh, so I think I, I was when I was doing my bachelor's studies in Bangalore. Uh, I, I, I uh, did my bachelor's in biotechnology, and I think it was. Sometime during the second year of my course, I started questioning what about my future moves as to what, what I want to see myself. And uh, again, I was very fortunate to have uh, good teachers at that time, good professors who uh, whom I could discuss these issues with. And um, for me, um, I had a feeling that, you know, the concept of, of medical science research and uh, the way it is developing or it is in India, 
right now. It was not very much so at the time when I was graduating. I'm not undermining the situation in India at that time. I think that there, there are excellent uh, places to study. But the overall scenario of, of biotechnology, studying bachelor's in biotechnology and then transitioning into a master's specific role was missing at that time. I didn't want to end up doing another master's in biotechnology rather than specific, I mean, specializing in a particular field. So that was one of the reasons when, which got me started in looking at other options outside of India as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I had, so my, from my family as well, there were members who, who were studying uh, abroad and they were, they, I used to be in frequent touch with them and to know the, uh, the scope and opportunities that are presented in, in universities abroad. And the curriculum itself was very interesting. So that's how the whole search parameters started for me to look for options outside of India as well. And um, UK was uh, was my first choice, to be honest, uh, because I before choosing the specialization course, I actually delved into the university's um, websites and I used to check the departments themselves and the research work that professors would do in their publications and who, the, the faculty that I would be involved with if I take up a course. So that is how I kind of, you know, decided on, on a particular specialization in a, in a specific university. Mm -hmm. You seem like you were very focused and very informative about uh, the kind of research and that was uh, going on in uh, your, the UK university. So because still what we have seen is like many of the students when they are making their move from bachelor's to master's, they are not that either informative or they don't explore their options. But when now you have traveled that path, you have started and then now you are at a global position where you can share your uh, ideas and then you can also guide them that how should they start doing this? So it was researcher who thought that, okay, because Normally, if it is just academic oriented, then you just want to look for a nice lab. It, it, it might not be a Nobel laureate or might not be a very active in research. But one, but as you said, that you have already seen the profile, the kind of research they are doing. So at that time, when you are making a decision, which lab to join, what are your thoughts or what would you like to share that what a person or a student prospectively should look for? It's, it's also a very interesting question here. I think uh, a lot of it depends on uh, on the person who's interested in doing this. You know, as you, as you just mentioned that I was focused. Yes, I would agree to that. I was very focused. I was, I used to be very, very, uh, you know, taken aback by, I mean, I would say I was. I used to get stressed knowing that I I was not sure where I'm going after my bachelor's at that on those days. So until Sunday, until I really zeroed upon zeroed down upon the place that I would want to be, I, it was uh, it was a tough journey for me. But uh, what I did and and then time was I used to uh, try and associate myself with anybody and everybody I know, my my people, my seniors, uh, somebody in my family. To find out what are the ways I could I could approach a, a university or a department and find out what research they're doing, because again at the, on those times we were I'm talking about in the year 2004 2005 ish um, when I started my bachelor's and in those times I, I was not I'm very honestly uh, saying this that I was not well equipped uh, technically to do this kind of searches online by myself. But then I picked this up you know, by discussions with my senior um, students in, in the in the university. And some of them who went abroad, I, I kept in touch with them and I found out what research they are doing. And uh, the curriculum of, of study of in master's in, again, my uh, backdrop is around 2008, 2009, when I graduated in my bachelor's. At that time, and now if you compare the universities in India, the, the master's curriculum, there's a heaven and hell difference. The, and now in India, in universities, they're actually using specializations, they're using uh, lab research, they're, they have uh, laboratory master's projects as mandatory. And in those days, it wasn't. So that kind of got me panicked. And I was like, if I have, if I finish my master's only with a theoretical uh, degree, this is not going to take me anywhere. So um, I 
I found out from people, I reached out to universities myself, and I would recommend this for every young student who is planning for a master's degree abroad, that uh, don't always fall for the name of the university. Of course, if you talk about UK, you have Cambridge, you have Oxford, you have King's College London, University College London. Okay, these are big names. But then the important fact over here would be to find out what are the what is the area that you want to specialize in. If I want to study, for example, if I want to work on cancer medicine, if I want to study oncology, then I would highly recommend that the this, the department in, uh, in Oxford is one of the best in the world. But if I want to study, for example, uh, statistics, if I want to study uh, biostatistics, is Oxford the same? Is, is it at the same level as the other universities in, in, in the UK? I would not uh, agree so. I think there are some other universities which are having a better faculty and department or rating in that sense, because every year you have this times rating coming out. So you can follow that, a student can follow that and find out which department is the highest rated. And then go into those websites. Every department in every university has a web page. So the, the group lead would have a have their own web page. They'll be declaring their own research module. What are their interests? What are the recent publications? You can always go to PubMed and look uh, look up using the first names or, or the or the surnames of the of the lead researchers and see what research they have published in, what kind of journals. Mm -hmm. um, so that is how I I did my research to find out where I want to be. I wanted to study immunology. I want to study infectious diseases. And at the time, uh, the, the best possible course uh, was available in Aberdeen. I, I reached out to the to the professors over there. I asked them, I sent them my uh, grades from college, from, from second year, uh, I think my fourth semester until fourth semester, and they were happy. But they told me that, yeah, you have a good enough chance to uh, get a successful application with us. And uh, that kind of motivated me. And then I, you know, pushed through. Nice. So when you landed in Aberdeen and then you completed your master's, then when you are making, a, like now this is another stage to make a decision that where yeah. do you want to pursue your PhD? Now, when you picked up uh, Berlin, people have all sort of, you know, that there is language barrier and all but you were passionate enough to just pick and break all the barriers entering into it. How was your experience pursuing your, your research as a PhD student? Um, so before I come to my, my experience as a PhD student, maybe I talk a little bit about how I happened to land into Berlin. Um, before this, after my master's. So I, I they, it didn't happen immediately. So after I finished my master's and till I started my PhD, there was a gap of almost uh, four years, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I was doing in this four years, I was crazily applying for PhD positions all over the world. I was applying for scholarships. And uh, to be honest, I, I got a lot of rejections. Uh, and a lot of my applications for scholarships were turned down. And uh, they were very heartbreaking at the time, but uh, I didn't uh, waste my time or I didn't give up my pursuit for, for my uh, for the PhD degree, uh, doctoral study. So in the meanwhile, while I was doing all these things, I kept myself occupied with uh, positions in India. I came back to India after my master's. I, I joined the ICMR virology laboratory in, in Manipal University. That was the first of its kind at that time. And I started picking up skills. Uh, I used to work in the lab. I used to work with scientists, established uh, postdoctorates, and uh, I would learn a lot of skills from them. So, and after a couple of years in, in Manipal, I moved to Delhi, and that's where we met, uh, you and I, in the Malaria Research Institute. Um, and I, I learned a lot over there as well. And during this time, uh, while I was in Delhi, I was offered an, an internship position, not a PhD full term, but it was an internship for three months in the University of Berlin, uh, the Freie University. And uh, this was on uh, the study of viruses. So I was very much interested in virology on, in those days, I would say. And um, I took this opportunity. I thought that maybe this is this is one uh, one way uh, ticket for me to find out if I would like to study in, in a country like Germany, where there has a German uh, language barrier. And I would know for first hand how, I mean, it would be like a trailer to the PhD that is, and that I, I would embark on to eventually. Mm -hmm. So I took up that opportunity. I, I, I came to Berlin for three months. Uh, it was a funded uh, position. So that was, I mean, easy on me. 
And I worked in the lab. I, I, I saw how the uh, work is done. I, I gathered information. I talked to the, the uh, supervisor, the PI as well. And we kind of struck a bond and we liked each other. And we thought that, okay, this is something, uh, PhD is something they would like to offer me. And I was also happy to do it, provided I get a scholarship. <laughs> so um, after that, uh, the he my my PI actually helped me in the application process of the of the scholarship as well. I mean, he count, he hooked me up with uh, some people who would uh, train me a little bit better in making my scholarship applications, which I was lacking in the previous uh, time times so I did that. And then I was, uh, I, I got through to it. So I got through the Erasmus Mundus scholarship for three years. Uh, they straight up funded me. Mm -hmm. And um, and then that's how the journey started in Berlin. And uh, if the question comes why I wanted to go to Germany in the first place, I mean, uh, barring all the Holocaust ma bad memories that the world has about Germany, we all, we, we can't, we cannot debate on the fact that they're one of the best uh, countries for education. Uh -huh. uh, education is free in Germany. This is something which I would want to emphasize to all students who are trying to pursue. Uh, in Germany, being one of the most developed countries in the world, they invest a lot of uh, money in education and uh, education in from right from school to higher universities, especially in R&D and science, it is free. You don't pay a dime. I mean, just you pay for a semester fees which is hardly 100, 200 euros, which is even less than even Indian universities would charge you for a semester. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is excellent. This is, uh, and they have a very, very uh, uh, robust way of managing the academia. Mm -hmm. And um, they respect academics a lot and uh, they respect people who are good in academics. And uh, this is something which kind of, uh, I got to know during my internship as well. I, I saw the value that they put into the, the researchers and, and postdocs and PhDs in the lab. So that kind of uh, inspired me quite a bit that uh, this is where I want to be. Nice. So Anirban, here you said, uh, pointed out about the internship, which was also funded. So mm -hmm. when a person is not 100% sure that what they want to, yeah. do you suggest that this is a possibility they should explore so that they can all, as you said, that they can learn uh, firsthand that what is this something which is driving them enough and they are crazy enough to commit for uh, like whatever duration it can be three, five or any time, whatever yes. PhD takes, because sometimes it takes a lot. Yes, yes, uh, indeed. I think uh, this is a very, very important uh, aspect that you brought about. I think internships are, are lovely. It's wonderful for, for a student if they can get a land an internship, which are, which are rare. Internships are not easy to get. Um, but if you can get it, I would say this is the best way to explore uh, the not just uh, the your passion. You, you just need to find out the topic that you want to do your research on. Because as you mentioned, a person really has to be crazy enough to get into a PhD degree. <laughs> and um, I mean, jokes apart, I mean, doing a PhD is not like a standard academic process. It's it's a, it's a commitment. So it, it's like getting yourself committed in a relationship with somebody. It's it's like that. You There's no going back on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, I mean, unlike where you're for doing your master's or bachelor's or in school, you have a set, set curricula. Uh, you are evaluated on your examinations. In PhD, your evaluation is after the six or five, six years of hard work that you put in. And it well might be discarded all, all of a sudden because of some minor uh, discrepancies. So it is, a, it is a hard road. It is not an easy road. And a person who's really motivated to get into that much commitment should explore this, uh, this way, I would say. Otherwise, um, it would be a lot of suffering for people at the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, getting internships are the best possible way to do it. Um, nowadays, even biopharmaceutical companies are offering a lot of internships, unlike uh, universities itself. Uh, for universities, it, it's always best if a person wants to apply for an internship, they want to find, they should find the lab where they want to work. And they should reach out to that uh, PI on the lab and ask them if they would be happy to fund them for an internship. Mm -hmm. So if that that accord can be struck, then I think this is the best option for a um, uh, would-be PhD uh, candidate. Okay. So now when people uh, 
finish their PhDs. They normally, you know, the standard protocol is like look for postdocs or the faculty positions somewhere after some experience. Mm -hmm. And one of the idea behind researcher celebrity is this also that research is not only what you can do in lab or on computer or on something, you know, like as you are now doing a global role of publications, this is also one thing which is a potential where the researcher can contribute according to their time, according to their interest, because not all of them want to be a virologist or, you know, go into the field and work with epidemiological situations and disease. Because you said that you have done your wet lab work, your, your PhD was in immunology, and then you were in Max Planck Institute. So you know that both the faces now, one just sitting on computer and doing all the writing stuff and enjoying your, or or I will say like enjoying the fruit of your research, because that is the one which has trained you to do what you are doing right now. Yeah. If you can share and give us a comparison between those two. It's a tough, tough question indeed. Um... Because I'm uh, no matter how I answer it, I'm 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 eventually going to hurt somebody's feelings here. I mean, uh, whoever is listening, going to listen to this. But uh, I'll be candid and honest because that's what I would uh, that's what I would want from somebody if I'm listening to that person to be honest and candid answers. So uh, as you mentioned, once you complete your doctoral studies, um, you'll have to ask yourself one question. You know, once you have finished a doctorate, a PhD, what does it really mean? This is a question which, which is coming up in a lot of uh, discussion forums nowadays, especially people, if you follow LinkedIn, you will see this question is asked a lot, that what does it mean to have a PhD? We know what it means to have an engineering degree. We know what it means to have a medicine degree. For that sake, an MBA as well uh, in finance or marketing or business, we know what it means. It's an end game. But what is the end game for a PhD scholar once the person is finished? What, where does he fit? Because this is the question that the person should be asking himself as well or herself as well and going ahead, what I want to do. So for me, I would suggest that if a person is passionate enough and uh, after going through the the grueling of a, of a PhD degree. If there is uh, interest and if you feel that, yes, you, you are still not finished, you have not satiated your hunger for benchtop research, then I would say postdoc should be the option. You should look for it. Uh, what postdoc is going to do to you in terms of your career, um, it's only going to make sure that you get into academia. Okay. Um, if you want to ever move out of postdoc and get into uh, a job like what I am doing or into corporate or in biopharmaceutical companies, will a postdoc be really, really uh, valuable? I wouldn't say so. It wouldn't. It would be counted as just a bit of work experience, nothing. It's not going to add any feather to your cap if you're, when your HRs are going to uh, evaluate you during the interview round. Mm -hmm. So. The plan should be clear. The plan should be very, very clear during your PhD itself. It's not like after you've completed the PhD, you then set to decide what should I do? Should I do a postdoc or should I go into, you know, uh, a different field of work? So this question I asked myself, I had, so I think the first two or three years uh, in my PhD, um, I had already tasted reality uh, of research myself. And um Although I have my passion for science never died, my passion for and hunger for uh, biological sciences and, and the miracles of life that is happening all around us every time has, has never died down. It's only exponentially grown. But my interest in working in a lab, laboratory and do benchtop research kind of diminished because I was a bit skeptical about the fact that the number of PhDs that come out every year and how many of them end up getting a permanent uh, position in life was an uh, equation which kind of dis is very disturbing and I'm sure you know it as well and a lot of the other people who, who, are, who are working in this field are aware that uh, the number of PhDs who actually end up being a professor or a full-time professor is very very low so the turnover rate that's what I would call it is very less 
And that kind of puts me in this uncertain bracket of uh, of a postdoc, and I didn't want to get into that that work line of work anymore. So I wanted a bit more surety in life, a bit more uh, you know confirmation in validation in terms of what I'm doing, which is why I I think I decided I had made up my mind by the time I had almost finished my PhD that once I I'm done with this I'm going to look into biopharmaceutical companies to see what positions I could explore. That brings me to uh, the roles that the options that a postdoc or, or a PhD would have in, in the biopharma sector is, is huge at this moment. And um, again, don't want to hurt people's feelings and, and the situation that we have gone through in the past couple of years uh, because of COVID um, and, and the way therapeutics is going to change. It's changing. The landscape is changing uh, in a, I don't know, in 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 a very very fast manner. And uh, and you will you will, we will see in the upcoming days how fast this is this change has been brought about because of this pandemic, and which kind of has opened doors for uh, for researchers like us, like a PhD or a, a scholar or a doctorate holder, and medical affairs, which uh, I'm a part of at the moment. Uh, is is being uh, is an integral part of most bio biopharma companies nowadays. And mm -hmm. The established ones, the big companies, they have dedicated medical affairs departments, who are uh, you know they are revolutionizing how we see therapy, how we see uh, research, even in, our, in, in the pharmaceutical sector as such. So there is a lot of opportunities. Yeah, there is, and even even if a person wants to stay in R and D and still be a part of a corporate sector that is also possible. The positions are lesser as compared to academia, but it is still possible. And uh, medical affairs is, is huge. Uh, there are medical doctors who have uh, who are joining uh, the workforce. There are biostatisticians who are joining the workforce. And um, definitely there are a lot of PhD scholars like us who are coming in here. And that brings me to the initial question, which I had asked uh, to, to in, in during this forum is, what does it mean to have a PhD? And this is a question that a person should be very, very clear of. And I would say when this question is asked, when you go to an interview or, or HR interview and a person asks you that uh, you do not have work experience, you do not have uh, real life experience in, in a corporate sector, you don't know how to handle these things, you've only been in academia, then I think a PhD scholar should put their foot down and say that it is not so. Mm -hmm. Because doing a PhD is shows a person has serious commitments, mm -hmm can handle the toughest situations in life at ease mm -hmm. and come out as a winner. Nice. And, 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 and analysis, you know, analytical skills is required at the most for a PhD scholar, especially who are in life sciences. Mm -hmm. So these three, four qualities are, are good enough for a, for a PhD or a doctorate holder to get into a, a biopharma company or a corporate sector because these qualities for any other professions to acquire them, they would take more than six or seven years to, to come to this level, which we are doing it in under five years. Yes. Well, I think this is this is something which we should be very, very clear of. Yeah. I think here I would like to uh, quote Dr. T. Adak, my PhD supervisor. He said that PhD is not a degree. It's a training. It trains you for your lifetime. And it essentially, is. I would like to tell all of our viewers, Anirban was very clear. He knew from bachelor's to master's where to go, from master's to PhD, the route, the place he wants to work, after PhD, what he wanted to do. This is one thing which I believe and I have felt that some PhD students end up doing postdocs it's not they wanted to, either it can be monetary situation or it can be a family situation because in some of our interviews it came up like, person said that, oh, I wouldn't have married if I was not working. I was working so that I can get married. And this is one thing which I feel that is so individualistic that a person can only decide for themselves. What are their priorities? Which is the route they want to take? And as 
Anirban said, I think now, uh, thanks Anirban for sharing this specific part because not many of the researchers are so, you know, far seeing, I will say, because what we see most of the time is like, what is immediately available? Okay, I'm doing this. This is what is available. Let's go into there. And this is also one of the path which people follow. But you have to make your own path. And as, okay, this is going good. And everyone, so let's take it to the next level. Now, when you have traveled globe, doing research in different countries, in different sectors, this traveling, how it takes a toll on family, on you, and what are your suggestions to deal with? Well, uh, you know, traveling is again, uh, again, as you, this is also very, very, uh, you know, un under the perception of the of, of any individual as to if they want to do it or not. I, I was, um, I, I, you know, uh, you know me. I mean, we we know each other for many years now. I, I come from a very, very uh, small town in India, in the in the northeast of uh, India. And uh, growing up, uh, it was one of my wish to travel the world. That was one of my, uh, uh, you know, driving force as well to explore options outside of India as well. So that, so for me, I don't think traveling has ever taken a toll as such. But yes, uh, staying away from family and uh, and your and your parents and your and your siblings is is tough. And it's not not easy for everybody to manage. And I've seen I've, I've been I've been around a lot of Indian students here abroad uh, who have felt the pain and have dropped out or moved back. And it happens. Uh, and there's nothing wrong if that happens because you, you should be true to your emotions. That's what I believe. And but my family has been very very supportive. I mean, uh, they've never helped me back, to be honest. They've always, uh, you know, let me fly and with my spread my wings as much as I wanted to. And uh, and so so did my friends. They've always encouraged me uh, to do that. But, uh, and I, I would say that um, in general, traveling, and if you are fortunate enough to travel and see places um, around the world, it's going to open up different uh, aspects of your mind as well. Uh, again, this is becoming a bit philosophical, um, but I think uh, being a doctorate student or, or a candidate at some point of time, we are all philosophers inside. So I would say that meeting new people and, and seeing new cultures and seeing the world with your own eyes and not through the eyes and, and words of, of printed media, uh -huh. you will see there's a this huge difference. The truth is, it's, it's very different. Your concept of people and uh, and religion and culture and and changes. You become a more tolerant person. So I think I have enjoyed every bit of it. I don't know uh, now that I'm getting older and older as to how much I would be traveling in life. Now I have a family, uh, but as a student, I did travel a lot. Even during my PhD, um, I used to whenever I used to get long weekends, I used to go for solo trips, hiking and stuff like that. I enjoyed doing that and uh, met a lot of new people, good friends um, all across. And I think that would be, that was an enriching experience for me. And I really truly value those. Um, and I really hope that some, many of you would want to do that and, you know, get enriched yourself. Great. So uh, Anirban, now we are towards the end of the conversation. Just your suggestions or guidance for the upcoming researchers or the new generation of researchers about the decision-making, the clarity which you had, what are the crucial things they should think about before making the decisions? Again, a toughie, <laughs> because um, this is um, this goes back to, again, the uh, how, how strong the individual person is in terms of making decisions. Making decisions are not easy, uh, especially decision, uh, life-changing decision, like going to a doctorate study. But uh, we can do some of the basics, right? Uh, first of all, as you mentioned, the word that needs more emphasis here is clarity. One person should have enough clarity as to why he wants to do research. Just because my friends are doing it, just because uh, somebody I um, have always idolized has done it, I should also do it. It's, these things are foolish. You know, These things should not be driving you to do with this because as I mentioned earlier, getting into a doctor is, is, is kind of a lifetime commitment. 
and uh, you wouldn't want to have commitment issues in the middle of your mid journey and that would really cause a lot of turmoil in life so first get clarity uh, that why you want to do it ask yourself nobody else should can be able to answer this for you you are the only person who can answer this why you want to do it and while you are doing it while you are answering yourself i think a person should be truthful there's no i i do not think i have ever given myself a false pretense when i'm asked myself the questions in the mirror that if i'm doing something should i do it or should i not i've tried to be as truthful to myself um has it helped yes it has at some at points it has put me through tough situations but looking back i i'm happy that i did that being truthful to myself uh so do not have sol- false pretense that i should do it i should be a doctor it to be get to get revered in the society it's not so a person is revered by the body of work that he does not the degrees that he holds right. so i think that is very important and once you've uh, made up your mind once you once you know that you want to do do the doctorates then half of the journey is already you know on course all you need to do is get in touch with the right people put enough energy uh, to reach out to resources find resources on your own talk to universities talk to departments talk to senior graduates talk to people who who you know are in the field uh, there are excellent tools um, i would highly recommend to get in get people who are who, who want to be i mean would be professionals to get a uh, i don't know um, a membership in 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 a website like linkedin or something sorry we are not promoting anything but uh it's really helpful these uh, these uh, portals or even research gate uh, uh, good portals to get connected to really really um knowledgeable people who can guide you nice. um me while i was as i said my early days in life i had limited guidance i couldn't fall back my parents were not biologists they were not doctors they were simple folks they didn't know anything about it uh my my siblings were far away from biological sciences so it was not easy but then now these things are really really different you have resources all around or you you have you're holding a computer basically in your hand in the form of your phone so mm-hmm. there's no excuses as to why we shouldn't put that much time and in, in, uh, interest in finding out where i want to be what i want to do Thank and you. be truthful have the clarity again i can emphasize it not enough that you need yeah. to be clear to yourself that why you want to do it Mm-hmm. do it because you love it don't do it because somebody else loves it nice that i think that is the best way to put in and with this uh, we would like to thank you anirban for taking time out and sharing your experience and i'm sure that most of our viewers will be benefited with your experience and they can also uh, contact you directly or through us thank you very very much and good luck for your future